Today's question comes from Brad in Idaho. Why are teachers consistently in the group of people that become millionaires? I'll just, I'm going to add to this question. He's referring to the Ramsey Solutions study, the largest group of millionaires ever done, over 10,000, and they were in the top five school teachers of net worth millionaires. That's what he's referring to. He goes on to say, is it because they marry well and have a spouse with a better income, or is there another reason? Are there other career fields I should look into that consistently make it into the millionaire club? Uh, you know, I, I can't wait for Dave's take on this. I'll tell you one thing that I believe is absolutely reason that teachers are in that group is because they are missional. They care deeply about their role. Uh, we also found in that same study that 96, 96% of net worth millionaires love their work. And in the teacher case, they're very dedicated to be instructors. They care deeply about serving kids. And they've chosen work that is meaningful to them. And thus, they've decided that what they make is enough. And they've made the choices to live on less than they make and choose a lifestyle that actually supports their work, not the other way around. And I think it's about deep meaning and purpose. And thus, they've been disciplined and um, they're very methodical. And uh, I think that's a part that plays too. Dave, what would you add to that? Or do you, does that square with you? I think that's you know, true of when, any occupation. When we got the data in, it was interesting to us. Um, you know, the, the top five career fields of the millionaires in the largest study of millionaires ever done in North America. Number one was engineer. Number two was accountant. Number three was teacher. Number four was business professional, which can mean almost anything. Um, and number five was um, lawyer. Uh, medical doctor didn't even make the top five. They're number six. And they are stereotypically worse with money than music artists. I mean, it's ridiculous. And so... Um, not all, in other words, not all of them, but I'm saying the stereotype is, is there for a reason. So what we figured out is, is that, okay, why is it, why do these five land there? And, and even if we look at further down the list, why do some of these, what, 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 is, what do they have in common? And what it does disprove is that your income causes you to become a millionaire. Because one third of the millionaires that we studied, 33% of them never made over a hundred thousand dollars. So it's not your income. In other words, you can't earn your way out of stupidity. So what did those, what does an engineer, an accountant, a lawyer, a business professional teacher have in common? And I think you hit it on the head when you said method, they are, they are systems people. They work with a set of principles and they don't, um, they're, they don't. They don't have free reign to make up their own rules. They're, they're, when you're a lawyer and you go before the judge, you have to follow exact procedures, even exact ways of addressing the court. If it pleases the court, your honor. You don't talk to humans out in the at the gas station that way. It's a set of procedures that you use. There's a proper set of motions that, and you don't have a choice. You don't get to. You know. Well, I'm creative. You're. You, you know old man in the robe, you don't get to say that, okay? Right. You get to say, if it pleases the court, your honor. I mean, you don't have a choice yeah. in this. You don't have a choice when you're an engineer designing a bridge. There's basically one way, otherwise it falls. Yep. And, you know, and, and accountants don't say, uh, well, this is creative. They call that embezzlement. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. It's like, right? right. And so accounting is a set of a generally accepted accounting principles, gap print, yep. the, the process of doing accounting. There's one process yep. and you submit yourself to proven principles and methods to be successful in any of those yeah. careers and money works exactly the same way right you have to submit yourself to a set of proven principles you live on less than you make you're generous you invest you have a written plan you're in agreement with your spouse these are set principles that you don't get to be creative well and my i don't think it works yeah yeah i don't agree who gives a crap if you agree this is the way the bridge is built. Yeah. This is the way that you do a lesson plan if you're a teacher. All right. This is the proper methodology for instructing. It is so structured. Yeah. And so they're used to functioning in, in a structured environment and submitting themselves to proven structured processes, which money and wealth building are. Right. And that's what the correlation was. It took us a little while to figure it yeah. out. And let's also understand that they have to be intentional to win with their income because they can't they can't rely on big increases in income. No, but there again, are no bonuses. One, one third of the millionaires never made over a hundred thousand. We need to keep that in mind. And here's the but Brad, let me address one other thing. 
are there other career fields I should look into that consistently make it to the millionaire club? No, that's right. Do not pick your field because <laughs> you think it's going to make you rich. Yeah. Let's... Never do that. But are there processes that you can submit yourself to? Yes. That will get you into the millionaire club. Absolutely. There are, but you don't pick your career field because what you'll be is a miserable human being with a big income. Yeah. If you pick the, you know, I'm doing this just for the money. Money wears off, man. You eat enough lobster, it tastes like soap. So there, true. There's just not, there's only so much money, so much money will do. And so you, you know, you don't pick your, no, you know, it's like you don't pick your wife based on the net worth of her father. You know, that's a bad way of doing it. You know, it's, you're going to get yourself in a mess, you know, Ooh, man, you know, that won't turn out well. No, it's going to go poorly. So yeah, you, you, you know, you pick your career field based on, purpose and meaning and can you actually do it you know and so what you've got is again with teachers or any accountant they enjoy process accountants enjoy process and they're talented at it teachers enjoy instruction they're good at it that's the mix and then you choose to make your money work that's what i love by the way in case so we got a lot of new people joining all the time we love this we're here we're growing like crazy all over the place podcast youtube everywhere here's the thing the median salary right now for teachers in the United States, is about $61,000. You need to understand, net worth millionaires, at that level, it can be done. And there's this generation that's watching too many TikTok videos and Instagram videos, Dave, where it says you've got to make millions of dollars a year uh, to be wealthy, and it's just simply not true. You can't out-earn your stupidity. That's a fact. I've tried it. Didn't work. You just got to not be stupid. Yeah. And so you can't make enough money to be stupid. It won't work. You'll lose it. I know I did it. I did it. I did it with zeros on the end. I know what it looks like. Yeah. I know exactly how it feels. I know what every, every bit of that experience. No, thank you. I don't want to do it again. So, um, you know, this is what you need to dial in on. Do something that you love and find a way to do it in an unusual way. Yes. Okay. Yes. Doesn't necessarily, if you're a teacher, it doesn't necessarily mean you're a classroom teacher. There's a lot of ways to be a teacher and, uh, a lot of things you can do. I have a, I have a gift of teaching. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and so uh, I'm a teacher. If yeah, you, you if teach you, financial uh, principles in a lot of ways. Yeah. And you've done it on 60 Minutes, ways. and you've done it in 600,000, uh, 600 stations for years, and then you've done it in front of hundreds of thousands of people. And that gets a very good point. You know, if I love instructing, I'm not limited to a public school classroom. But that is also a wonderful place to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not the only definition of a teacher. That's correct. So um, now, again, the, per, for purposes of that study, these were probably classroom teachers. Yeah, yeah, that's what we talk a lot about, sure. Yeah, but the, uh, I mean, I don't think someone identifies in a survey of millionaires no. that they are a teacher if they're on the radio. That's not, probably not what they're, <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. probably not that what they're correct. doing, right? So yeah. um, but that, that's not the plan. So that's a really good question. Don't pick your career based on how much money you can make only. It should be a consideration. Mm-hmm. But, um, but, but don't pick it based on that only and go, oh, I'm going to make a lot of money and that'll make me happy while I'm doing stuff every day that I hate doing. Yeah. No, that won't work. But also don't pick a career that says, oh, this is going to make me happy and it's okay if I'm broke. That's not necessarily either. No. You should make decision. more money if you're doing something you love because you're good at it, because you care about it, because you're creative, because you've got energy. You yeah. should make more money, not less. Yeah. So... That's the way to get at it. Good question.